Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I pray you well. Uh, Allah bless you all. Okay, let's uh, conclude this surah today. Insha'Allah ta'ala. Okay, al-Fatiha. Bismillah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Allahumma allimna ma yinfa'una wa anfa'na bima allamtana wa amnahna ya rabbina ilman wa amlan wa sidqan wa qurban ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma akrimna wa la tuhinna wa a'tina wa la tahrimna wa athirna wa la tu'thir alayna wa ardina wa ardu'anna ya kareem so, Alhamdulillah, <coughs> Allah, we, in, in, the, in the verses of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided many, many uh, logical arguments and examples of, logical arguments for the truth of his being God, his being one, and that only he deserves worship. And we looked at many of the arguments that um, demolished the shirk of the idolaters of the Arabs and anyone else and how we saw that how their actions and practice have no basis neither in aql neither in reason so you can't prove that you know there is another being besides God that deserves worship nor is there a basis in naql in that which has been uh, transmitted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, to any of the messengers of God, especially not the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam. So then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the messenger to summarize all of this, like look at the the upshot, the, the you know, the, you know, the, um, uh, essence of everything that's uh, that he says قُلْ he says it with an uh, he told you to use a uh, nominal sentence which has power and you know a fixed meaning for meaning قُلْ إِنَّنِي هَدَانِي رَبِّي إِلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ دِينًا uh, قَيِّمًا or in another قِرَاءَ قِيَمًا right? قَيِّم is stronger Millata Ibrahim Hanifa Wama Kana min al Mushrikin. Say, O Messenger, you could have said inni, or <coughs> you could have just said Hadani Rabbi, but there's the emphasis with the inna and then the extra noon, inna ni, even further emphasized to show this is all connected to what's come before, it's the summary. Inna ni Hadani Rabbi, I, you know, indeed I. Uh, my loving Lord has guided me to a truly extremely straight way. So as we said, we said before, the straight way being a metaphor for correct belief and good actions that lead to God's pleasure, which you could translate as paradise or success and salvation. And you don't want a crooked way. You don't want a way that's going to fatigue you and get you to the destination and which be which would be correct belief but bad actions right you know believers will end up in paradise but they may have a, a pit stop you know in hell first out of the billah so we don't want that so you want the straight way correct belief and good actions that leads you there directly so uh, so he said my loving lord he's everyone's lord but the special attention and the inaya for the prophet that's why he's told him to use this word that he's guided me to the truly straight way right so if the, Allah has shown this care to the Prophet and guided him. We should follow him so we can get the same benefit. Hadani Rabbi ila siratin mustaqim to a truly, absolutely straight way, which is what? Deenan qayyiman. So qayyim, something that's up, upright. <coughs> but a very emphatic form is used here. So completely straight and upright. And you know, rigorous and sound in its morals and values, and the good that it teaches constantly. Stay away from indecencies. Do what's right. You know, liabluakum ayyukum ahsanu amala. Allah subhanahu wa taala said, He created death and life to test us to see who's the best in deeds. Now, who can live their life with not just the good but the best of deeds? It's someone who applies this, right? 
and there's many proofs of this as we've seen in the surah and so what is this entire religion millata ibrahim hanifa it's the way right it's it's the path and the practice of the ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam who the you know many of the arabs or a lot of them actually um a try, trace their ancestry to and b claim to follow, to follow his religion so there was a general understanding that you know he was a a prophet from god and he was teaching the way of god so they say yeah we believe in him but they had twisted uh, those teachings so his hanif so on with a proof and with a recognition of what's right and the fitra who he's disgusted and, and put off by something that's foul and vile so he leans away from it he's, it's not something appealing to him wama kana min al mushrikin and then to really emphasize the whole matter all over again and in no way shape or form was he ever he was not one of the polytheists not one of the idolaters not one of the people who worshiped something else besides god who thought anything else is worthy of worship besides allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so then <clears throat> an emphasis uh, another command directly that comes to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the very next verse so you could say that the first the previous one was uh, connected to the overall belief and this is connected to the good actions right qul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alamin and we've looked at this verse before <coughs> or something very similar to it in the previous verses he's saying say and this is what it's an expression of devotion expression of of someone committing their life to god i am alive for god i live my life for god i will die and that will be in, you know in a way pleasing to god however it comes i will accept it so that's the way pleasing to god qul inna salati say my prayer so this is the outward act of worship that people see you know the movements where you give up your time you give up you know you direct your heart to allah so it's a personal act of worship right in the salati my prayer wa nusuki and my rights you could say but these are the 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 the, the, the sacrifices done in the hajj and the umrah these rights so this can be done is done for god but also you, you can't eat all the, you know all the meat of the animal that you've you slaughtered is usually given out to people so good that remains with the person alone and good that that passes on to others in uh, and there's many ways you can look and to interpret this but let's just keeping it in line with you know the previous discussion lotter wa mahyaya and this is nice and my life and not just life mahya so the master me my entire life my entire existence you could say my entire living right and it's nice uh, <coughs> because um sala uh, is a physical act of worship and you know for the individual then another physical act of worship that entails you know ending the life of another no sok and then back to life again right so the opposite wa mahya and then we're going to talk about death as well so um so so wa mahya my living my existing right wa mamati and my death everything whatever it is however it is everything is belongs to god it's dedicated to god it's for allah the supreme being right who is rabbil alamin the loving caring master of all those who exist especially those of ration and reason the men and the jinn he's their lord he's created all of them he keeps them all in existence and he gives them all the blessings that they have so it's only right and fitting and appropriate that they reciprocate by directing their hearts their souls their bodies their life and their death to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know this is honestly this is the matter and if people really understood the root of this and what it entails then this is what we do our days and our nights would be directed to god just like the days and the nights of the messenger of allah and say ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam la sharika la he has no partner 
There is no partner for God, right? He has no partner in divinity. He has no partner uh, as human beings have partners, spouses, wife. He has no partner in ruling his kingdom. He has no partner in judging uh, creation on the day of judgment. No, la sharika lah at all, no way. Then he says, wa bidhalika umirtu uf. Wow. This is powerful. And with that, I have been commanded. And the that here is talking about ikhlas. That matter of sincerity, making my life and my death and my worship, my prayer and my sacrifice and my life and my death and my beliefs and my actions and my existence, all for God, that's what I've been commanded to do. Right, and someone who lives their life according to the way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so does the obligatory, refrains from the forbidden, and you know has the character of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Focuses heart, uh, focuses his heart on Allah with gratitude. That's what's happening. The bidalika that. So he said, and only with that, only to do that. Lofty matter of having been completely and utterly sincere in your life towards God, that is what I've been commanded to do. وَبِذَاكَ Oof, really, really. That ذَلِكَ is just really powerful. It's stronger than actually saying وَبِلِخْلَاسِ right? And I've been commanded to be sincere. No, all of those things in the most perfect, amazing way, that is what I've been commanded to do. وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And I, I am the first of those who submit and surrender to God. This is obviously talking chronologically. <coughs> From this Ummah, the Messenger of Allah was the first one to submit. The commands came, right? Ya ayyuhal muzzammil, and ya ayyuhal muddathir, qum fa'anzir, rise and warn people, right? So the obligation before the prayer and the fasting, the Prophet was told, you are a messenger, you're going to deliver the, the message of God. And then the prayer came and the Quran and recite the Quran and tell them people, tell them about God. He's been submitting from day one, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he's the first, first one who submits to God. And so he's the greatest of those who also submit to God. Right? And uh, um awal al Muslimin. And then, you know, there are discussions that the ulama have about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was given, like Imam Al-Tahawi says in his Aqeedah, that he was given the, the role of being a Prophet before the physical form of Adam Alayhi Salatu was, uh, was created, right? So even then he was submitting Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So then he says, after all of this, after all of these proofs and seeing all of the favors of God and all of the kindness and generosity of God and all of the reasons why he deserves worship and after dismantling all of your arguments and your practices and showing the folly and futility of your efforts to try and show that someone else deserves worship and to show that all of your <coughs> beliefs about your idols are wrong why would anyone even turn to another idol? Why would anyone turn away from God? He said, قُلْ أَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ Let's come back to this. قُلْ أَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ أَبْغِي رَبَّا وَهُوَ رَبُّ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Say, O Prophet, should I seek a Lord other than Allah while He is the Lord of everything? It's really strong, this. قُلْ وَلَا تَكْسِبُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ إِلَّا عَلَيْهَا no one will reap except what they sow. Okay, let's amend that shortly. وَلَا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى No soul burdened with sin will bear the burden of another. ثُمَّ, إلي... ثم إِلَى رَبِّكُمْ مَرْجِعُكُمْ Then, moreover, what's more important is, <coughs> after this, now, um, to your Lord, your Master, your loving Master, is your final, ultimate return. For you nabbi'ukum bima kuntum fihi takhtalifun. And then He will consequently, and you know, in a uh, 
consequential way inform you of all the things that you are differing on. So he says, قُلْ أَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ So غَيْر always brings to mind this meaning of something being as far away and as different to the other matter as possible. So you have Allah and then anything else. قُلْ أَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ أَبْغِي رَبًا You want me say, am I to seek actively go and seek and desire that's what they used to do they would actively crave and desire these idols to worship them right you want me to go and seek a master uh, other than allah someone anyone everyone else or anyone else besides allah the supreme all-powerful perfect king وَهُوَ رَبُّ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Whilst He is the supreme creator and master of everything, He is the one that's given it in its existence, keeping it in existence, all the other blessings it needs to stay in existence. Allah is doing that. You want me, am I to go and seek out another to treat as a Lord when Allah is the Lord of everything? It's just folly, right? It's just defies logic, defies reason. And there's narrations where they actually came and they said to the Prophet وسلم, Leave your religion, come and worship our Lord And on the day of judgment, if they were saying like if it happens We will bear your sins If it turns out that we're wrong and you are right We'll carry your sins, you'll, uh, you'll be fine so the response to this came in this verse then. So then he says, وَلَا تَرِبُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ إِلَّا عَلَيْهَا So it doesn't necessarily mean no one will reap except what they sow. It means that no soul sins, uh, no soul will have to uh, uh, deal with, the, uh, with anyone's sins but its own. So taxable earning, we've talked about this before, about Allah... So the good is easier to do and the bad, sorry, the good is easy and the, the bad requires effort. Like Allah's made it, as we saw in the previous verses, you do one good thing and you get, you get a tenfold reward and then or up to many multiplica multiplications of it. And if you do intend to do a bad, you don't get anything written against you. When you do it, there's just one. So you've got to go out of your way to bladen and burden yourself with sin. So he says, وَلَا تَكْسِبُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ إِلَّا عَلَيْهَا And every soul, when it, whatever sins it accrues and acquires, they're on it. It has to bear them. It has to... Uh, it is responsible for it. No one else. So... <clears throat> yes, you can start a bad practice and others can do it. You are, you're sinful for starting it and anyone else who you open the door for, they're sinful and then you're sinful for, for opening the door for them. That's a different matter. But but that, that's the, it's still the same sin of the person who started it, right? And uh, so here he's saying that just because they're saying, well, nahmil khatayakum, as they said in Surah Al-Ankabut, we'll carry your sins. No. Every sin that a person does, they carry themselves. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in a different way, with more clarity, uh, in a different way, uh, just to clarify further, وَلَا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى So the word wizr has a root meaning of something being heavy, a burden. So a wazir is someone who's carrying a burden, who has something heavy to carry. Wazirah it's uh, in the feminine here and it's indefinite because it's refer re referring to souls. No soul, meaning no individual who, who has a burden to carry, male or female, whoever they are, is going to carry the burden of another. No bearer of burden, burden shall bear the burden of another. No one uh, has to deal with anyone else's sins. Right, your own sins. If you got a hand in someone else's sin, that's a different matter, right? Then it, they're, they're your sins. But someone else uh, commits a sin, and then you come and carry it, or you do something, and someone will say, "I'll I'll take care of it for you. I'll carry them for you. I'll, if there's a punishment, I'll suffer it for you." Wrong. No, that's not going to happen. Everyone's responsible for themselves. No one else is going to bail them out in the way by carrying their sins. Then he says, "Thumma then." There is the meaning of then, then, but also of uh, uh, moreover, right? In an even stronger way, the Atarahi um, Rutbi. What's more important, 
and what's of more consequence, not the fact that not just the fact that everyone's uh, carrying going to carry their own sins and have to deal with them and suffer the consequences, that you nabi'ukum Allah in this tremendous way and with tremendous knowledge that has consequences is going to tell you about all of the things you are differing on. That they used to differ with the Prophet, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on matters of Tawheed and matters of, of sacrifices and rulings of law. All that they did, <coughs> and if it was, whether it's the Jews and the Christians who said Uzair is the son of Allah or Jesus is the son of Allah, all of them, all these things that they were differing with the Prophet with, <coughs> trying to say that the Prophet وسلم, is wrong and the believers are wrong. No, Allah will tell them what the reality of the matter is and how they used to differ and what they used to differ. All their egotistical desires and everything they had hidden will be made clear and then they're going to suffer its consequences. Right? <laughs> billah. Allah protect us. So then, this is where he says, وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَكُمْ خَلَائِفَ الْأَرْضِ And he's the one who placed your successes on earth. وَرَفَعَ بَعْضَكُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ دَرَجَاتٍ And he raised some of you in rank of others. لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ فِي مَا آتَاكُمْ So he may test you with what is given you. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ سَرِيعُ الْحِسَابِ وَإِنَّهُ لَغَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Surely your Lord is swift in punishment and uh, <coughs> but He is certainly all forgiving and most merciful. So this is it. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us as Khulafa, as the Khalifa, His deputies on earth. You can't be a deputy whilst ignoring the, the main commandments. Our pur- purpose on earth was to be a Khalifa. Allah has put us here. Now, as human beings, individuals and communities and societies are we going to take this obligation and fulfill it properly or are we just going to toss it aside and do what we want there's consequences either way <coughs> so he he said he made us the khulafa the khalaif and we are the ones who've inherited the earth from the previous generations right so there's both meanings here and uh, uh, so allah has done this <coughs> And not only that, وَرَفَعَ بَعْضَكُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ دَرَجَاتٍ And he raised some of you over others in many, 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 many significant degrees. So huge, huge ranks. You just compare the king to the street sweeper. What a disparity there is between them. So all of this has been done. لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ فِي مَا آتَاكُمْ And so he can test you. Right? He can test you. Also, people replacing one generation with the next, you know, group dying and then others coming. Are you going to take the teachings of, say, Sayyidina Ibrahim and faithfully com- apply them and convey them to the next generation? Or are you going to twist it and change it like they did? All of this you can infer from this. Liabluakum, so he can test you in the things that he's given you wealth, position, status, authority, knowledge. All of these things are gifts from God. How are you going to proceed? How will you take these actions and, and, and go further? Right? These gifts from God and go further by uh, how will your actions be as a result? And then he said, Inna rabbaka sari'ul iqab. Indeed, your loving Lord, O Messenger. So you keep sh- focusing on the Messenger to show his I- intense kindness to him that he's going to be protected uh, and by extension anyone who follows his way uh, he in the, indeed your lord is swift in punishment meaning that Allah <coughs> uh, someone who doesn't fulfill the uh, commands of God then the punishment that comes to him is swift Allah swiftly brings it and this can also be you know um, it doesn't mean immediate but it means swift and this swift can it depends on the context Right? Just like the Zalim, Allah sometimes allows the Zalim to keep doing wrong until when he is taken to task, it happens, you know, in one significant stroke. Right? So the same thing here, but here he is swift. So his punishment is swift. Or you could say that um, <coughs> uh, or you can say when Allah wants you, you know, wants to actually punish someone and make it happen it happens in a quick way so either he's swift to bring it or once it's come it happens quickly both of the ways you can intuit and then he says uh, 
and, and indeed he is la the Islam of emphasis is ghafoor from the pattern to ghafara to forgive and protect so he protects uh, from the consequences of one's punishment and he forgives ghafoorun indefinite to show in a huge way the word basically you can understand that he will forgive anything Allah is ready to forgive anything as long as you see in this dunya as a believer or a believer in the akhirah or if a disbeliever in this life before death comes he repents Allah is prepared to forgive everything Rahim intensely merciful and permanently kind despite the sins and the crimes he forgives them and then he gives gifts on top of it Allah is so superior you know far superior to any anyone else you know others you know you can upset them and you can do crimes and whatever and they may let you off and or they may punish you but then they don't start giving you handing you dishing out gifts to you but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you know supreme and perfect and despite a lifetime of sins and rebellion to God someone could repent be forgiven five minutes before death and then go to paradise and have unimaginable gifts and treasures and enjoyment forever but then if you look at it says in the rabbaka sari'ul hisab he's quick in punishment wa innahu lah and then also adding the wa inna again and then so both of these are realities inna nominal sentence on both the both realities are highly emphasized but he emphasizes the latter more so firstly he could have said in rabbaka sari'ul iqabi wa wa ghafur wa ghafur rahim but then he adds wa innahu this ha dhamir shan and also the really amazing matter you need to be aware of is he is ghafur rahim but then the extra lam added for further emphasis shows that this is the default state Allah is willing and to, to forgive and show mercy no matter what but he also has a you know this quality where he can't punish so he's inviting them look leave your shirk leave your bad ways come to the mercy of God right sabaqat rahmati ghadabi as the hadith states that you know my he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that uh, my mercy has beaten outstripped my wrath so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to place us in the circle of his forgiveness and mercy and generosity and kindness always in this life and in the next life and to not look upon us with the gaze of anger and you know with the desire of the, with the will to punish and that's that's what we understand of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's what we hope for, hope for from our tremendous Lord <coughs> and this by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been Surah Al-An'am and what a tremendous Surah it's been uh, we will start next with Surah Al-A'raf which is another beautiful uh, amazing Meccan Surah and we'll continue from there may Allah accept this from us and from you and from the ulama you know whose works we base this on Abu Saud ibn Ashur uh, you know Sayyid Tantawi um, Burhan al-Din al-Biqai Imam Alusi all the others who you know without whom we wouldn't have you know uh, this understanding so Allah bless them all and forgive them and raise their ranks and give them the reward of what we've done here and to give all of that to the one who brought all of this to us, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So uh, we'll stop here. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati ya ma yasifoon. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Al-Fatiha.